Hi there. <clears throat> Today I watched a couple of videos uh, from uh, a couple of uh, YouTube uh, photographers who uh, talked about what were the things they wished they had known uh, when they started photography. I thought it was an interesting topic and many of the comments were quite positive but thinking about it afterwards I, I came up with with basically one thing that that uh, that I came away from it with and, and I kind of jotted it down here just to, to make sure that I wouldn't forget it before I managed to set up for this video uh, we get so caught up in the technical aspects of photography now because we can uh, before digital when when you shot images uh, you you didn't get to do much in the way of post processing unless you worked in a dark room and uh, spent a tremendous amount of time on each image getting it just the way you wanted and even then there were sometimes flaws there were sometimes little things that 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 you really didn't have the tools to deal with also a lot of people shot slide film now i mean nowadays i hear so many people say well you must shoot raw Notice the pause. I, I'm not sure how to respond to that anymore. When I had my first digital SLR, I shot RAW, and I learned very quickly that in order to get the best from that camera, I had to shoot RAW. With the cameras I have now, which are not the latest models, but are you know quite a bit newer, obviously, uh, I find that I often shoot RAW plus JPEG, and I often just use the JPEGs. Cameras have gotten better at that. Think about it. How many people shot Kodachrome? And now we make Kodachrome sound like it was such a wonderful thing, and, and it really showed your creativity. It showed how accurate you could be. Because Kodachrome, well, Kodachrome was a very good analogy, or I should say JPEGs are a very good analogy for Kodachrome. If you get everything right, a JPEG looks great. If you get everything right, a Kodachrome looks great. If you mess up your exposure or whatever, then both have pretty much lost any hope of being a great picture. Now, I digress, because right now I'm getting caught up in that same technical nonsense that I hear all too often. The point is that Every image has to have something in it other than technical merit. If technical merit were the only thing that mattered, then let's get a test chart and let's keep shooting it and see how perfect we can make it. Instead, it has to have something in the composition itself that has some way of affecting the viewer. Now, um, on a, a, a similar note, the thing that I find nowadays in so many people that are very much into photography is that they still seem to be under the, I don't know, misguided, uh, misapprehension, I'm not sure what word to use, under the premise that, well, every time I go out I should come back with lots of great pictures. Many of the great photographers in the past would have been quite happy to come back with one great picture. Most of the time they came back with no great pictures. And that's the thing. The less you know, the higher your expectations are. The less you realize what is involved in a great image, the higher your expectations are. And unfortunately, your high expectations don't necessarily mean that, that it, uh, it results in higher quality images. Instead, we tend to sort of take for granted that because our image is technically good, because most cameras will help us with that, that we now have a great image. It might be pretty, but it might not be more than that. People might look at it and say, oh, isn't that marvelous? but then they'll forget about it and walk on. 
uh, your friends and uh, you know acquaintances on Facebook will all take like for it. You will put it on Instagram, and all the people who know you personally will also click like on it. And you know, if you ask them about the picture, they say, well, "What picture was that?" And you tell them, and they say, "Oh yeah, that was really nice." Nice. Don't you love that word? Nice is the word you use when you can't think of anything else. Because it didn't affect you enough for you to come up with anything else. Okay. I know. This is pretty depressing. And, uh, well, let's, let's just say not the most uplifting thing. But basically it is. Stop and think for a minute. What I'm telling you is this. Give yourself a chance. Instead of going out and going snap, 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 snap at everything in sight... Sit down, look at the world around you. Actually look at it. See if there's something in there that you really, really want. And that does not mean going out and copying somebody else's images. It does not mean, you know, oh, well, I just shot my greatest uh, sunset out of the 247 sunsets I've shot this year. <sighs> Do something different. Tell a story. Uh, a picture doesn't necessarily have to tell a story, but try that. If you were into landscapes, then try telling a story. If you're a storyteller, then do a landscape. But get out there and actually be your own hardest critic. Look at your image seriously. Forget about the likes it got on Facebook. Forget about the likes it got on Instagram. Instead, look at it and say, how can I make this better? And I don't mean better as in sharper focus. I don't mean better as in more perfect exposure. I don't mean better like that. I mean make this image speak. Make this image say something to the viewer. Okay, I realize this has been a rather rambly roundabout video today. So let me finish off with, uh, I guess, the only real takeaway from it. And again, it goes back to what I've said in many videos in the past. Practice your photography. Practice in the sense that always look at an image and say, what does it need? How can I make it better? And when you reach the point where you look at an image and say, you know, I really can't see how I could have done better than that. Then you've created a good image. And if it doesn't please everybody else, if it doesn't get likes, that doesn't matter. It pleased you. And the most important person to please when you are an amateur photographer, when you are a hobbyist, the most important person to please is yourself. Well, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you want to see more of my videos, then subscribe to this channel. And of course, if you think anybody needs a little boost, a little push, and that this video or any of my other videos might be of some help to them, then by all means share it. Well, bye for now.